Hey everybody, it's Rendon with TJ Free. There's a new version of Inkscape available and it's amazing. In this video, I wanna go over some of the features and improvements that you're gonna find in Inkscape 1.0. And I'm gonna be reading directly from the inkscape.org uh, release, talking about the different changes. And so what in the background while I'm reading that, I'm gonna be showing some different things on the screen. Hopefully this is a good way to bring you up to speed quickly of all the different changes. It's a really good article they have written. I just wanna say I'm so grateful to the Inkscape team and for everyone who's helped to make this uh, improvement and make this new software possible. If you feel the same way I do, you can head, head over to inkscape.org. You can either contribute your time doing translations or doing development or bug reporting, or you can even donate financially to help support the developers and all those involved in this great software. Let's take a look. After a little over three years in development, the Inkscape team is excited to launch the long-awaited Inkscape 1.0 into the world. Built with the power of a team of volunteers, this open source vector editor represents the work of many hearts and hands from around the world, ensuring that Inkscape remains available free for everyone to download and enjoy. In fact, translations for over 20 out of all 88 languages were updated for version 1.0, making the software more accessible to people from all over the world. A major milestone was achieved in enabling Inkscape to use a more recent version of the software used to build the editor's user interface, namely GTK3. Users with high DPI, high resolution screens can thank teamwork that took place during the 2018 Boston Hackfest for setting the updated GTK wheels in motion. This latest version is available for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. All macOS users will notice that this latest version is labeled as Preview, which means that additional improvements are scheduled for the next version. Overall, 1.0 delivers a smoother, higher performance experience on Linux and Windows, and a better system integration on macOS. One of the first things users will notice is a reorganized toolbox with a more logical order. There are many new and improved Live Path Effect features, or LPE. The new searchable LPE selection dialog now features a very polished interface, descriptions, and even the possibility of making favorite LPEs. Performance improvements are most notable when editing node-heavy objects, using objects dialog, and when grouping and ungrouping. Freestyle drawing users can now mirror and rotate the canvas and test out X-ray and split view modes. The new power pencil mode of the pencil tool provides pressure dependent width and it's finally possible to create closed paths. Inkscape now allows you to vectorize line drawings too in the new unified trace bitmap dialog. New path effects that will appear to the artistic user include offset, power clip, and power mask LPEs. Users who work on technical drawings will appreciate being able to create a duplicate guide, align grids to the page, the measure tool's path length indicator, and the inverted y-axis, which makes coordinates match between the SVG code and the Inkscape user interface. Potential favorite new LPEs might be corners for even rounding or cutting of path corners, ellipse from points for construction of circle and ellipse, and measure segments for architectural plans and other real-world object measuring. A new functionality with the circle tool means it can create closed arcs with the click of a button. When it comes to SVG and CSS, Inkscape can make use of SVG2 vector hatches and can render and export hairlines. Designers will appreciate being able to export PDFs with clickable links and metadata. They can enjoy new palettes and mesh gradients that work in the web browser, as well as the handy on-canvas alignment for objects. When it comes to wrangling text in Inkscape, variable font support, browser-compatible flowed text, and simplified yet powerful line height settings will make it a joy. New templates for different screen sizes, margin guide, and a colorful checkerboard background are now available. Inkscape 1.0 even features an extension for creating interactive mockups to simulate user interaction with an app in the web browser for presentations or for usability testing. For users interested in customizing their user interface, Inkscape 1.0 allows for plenty of tinkering. From menus and toolbars to page sizes and custom font directories, there's a lot to discover. Choose from your installed themes to give Inkscape a dark or bright interface and select one of the available icon sets, which include customizable single color icons and newly designed multicolor icon sets. 
The new dialog for saving the current file as a template with keywords and title allows you to always have the template you need available. The extensions system has undergone some fundamental changes in version 1.0. Over the years, Inkscape users have become used to working with third-party extensions, such as various ones used for laser cutting and exporting to file formats which are not a native part of Inkscape. While outreach to extension developers was undertaken as Inkscape migrates towards Python 3 and a more logical and fully tested extensions API, which is now hosted in a separate repository, not all third-party extensions have been brought forward to be compatible yet. This will mean that 1.0 will not allow some users to continue with their normal extensions workflow. While version 1.0 is a project and community milestone, for the volunteer contributors, it represents the beginning of new ones on the road to constantly and consistently improving this free and open source vector editor. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this video informative. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, leave your questions in the comments below if you have any, and definitely go over to inkscape.org and check out how you can get involved with this software and just learn more about it if you're not already a user. But as always, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.